Good evening all and welcome. I want to give a special welcome to the 73% of you who listen on a regular basis who aren't actually subscribed. If any one of you who, you know, is part of this percentage could explain to me in the comments why you don't just subscribe and listen all the time, I'd really appreciate that. What am I doing wrong? But what am I doing right that you keep coming back? <laughs> really weird stuff. So please consider subscribing if you want to stick around because I do post every single night. I would also like to give a huge thanks to Miss Fearsome who is joining us today. Uh, you may have heard her before on the channel, she is excellent talent and if you'd like to hear more from her you can check out her link in the description. But for now, it's time to get comfortable, lock your doors and let the darkness take control. My mum and I lived in a cheap, single wide trailer in a really terrible trailer park. It was my single mum working two jobs and was going to cosmetology school after my dad left. I stayed with my aunts overnight a lot because my mum would work graveyard shifts. She picked me up from my aunt's house at 7am one day and we went back to our trailer. I remember immediately not wanting to go inside, begging to ride my bike but my exhausted mother just wanted to sleep, so we went in and she laid in bed. I sat up watching Barney for a while, and being the annoying toddler that I was, I woke up my mum and asked to go outside and ride my bike, which we usually kept in my room because if we left it outside it would be stolen. I told my mum I didn't want to play in my room, so asked if I could lay with her. While we were laying there for some reason, I told my mum there was someone in the closet, and that he wanted to hurt me. I have no idea how I knew that. I didn't even think I went into my room that day. She got up to show me no one was there, and when she walked into my room, the folding closet door started to open and got stuck on something. Turns out, a previously convicted child molester had skipped bail on a new trial, watched my mum's comings and goings for a few days, broken into our house while she was still at work. He took my bike in the closet with him, hoping I would come looking for it when I got home, and that was the only thing that kept him from jumping out of the closet to attack my mum when she walked in there. Were the spokes on my bikes getting stuck on the little metal tabs at the bottom of those folding closets? Needless to say, we ran like hell out the house, got in the car and drove away. Unfortunately, the guy got out of the house before the cops showed up. Closets still scare me to this day some 26 years later. By the time I turned 11, I was finally old enough to start babysitting my nieces and nephews. And four years later, whilst doing just this, something happened. I was about 15 now, and my sister was working early morning shifts, so she had asked me to stay the night to babysit for her. I wasn't allowed to have a phone, so my mum would let me take hers just in case. I was looking after two boys that night. One was about eight, I'll call him D and the other was three or four. I'll call him M. My sister lived in a not-so-great part of town, so I'd always keep the doors locked up tight. And being that I liked to listen to scary stories and was into true crime, I was a pretty paranoid kid. Next door to my sister's place, there was a pretty large apartment complex. It housed some pretty sketchy people. Next door to my sister's place, there was a large apartment complex. It housed some pretty sketchy people, but they had a nice playground and a basketball court right outside, and we went to play there a lot. On this particular day, though, I had just woken up and was making French toast for my two nephews. I was listening to music with my earbuds in, as they were still sleeping, but I knew they'd be up soon. So you know when you have music in your ears, and how sometimes it sounds like someone is calling out to you, or you think you hear something. Well, I kept hearing noises other than my music, and I kept pulling out my earbuds to listen, but the noises would stop. I did this about a dozen times before eventually chalking it up to my imagination. I was just finishing up the French toast when my nephews came out of the room and into the kitchen ready to eat. I sat my younger nephew in his booster chair and started cutting up pieces for him, while my older nephew was sitting at the table with a plate full of food. 
We turned on the XM radio and started playing some kids' music whilst eating, and I thought I was hearing noises again. I kind of tuned them out and finished eating, then I put the dishes in the sink and got the kids dressed. They were begging to go to the playground, so I gave in and said sure, and as I was getting dressed, I heard a loud crack. I freaked out, jumped up and ran out of the room and went to check on the boys. D came out of his room with M in his arms. I looked at D and said, Did you break something? He shook his head and looked absolutely petrified. I told the boys to stay in the hallway as there were no windows, but I wasn't really sure what was going on. I made my way around the house, looking to see if something had fallen, but nothing looked out of place. Then I saw a shadow peeking in through the front door. The door had an oval glass pane, but it was difficult to see into, unless you had your hands cupping your face whilst pressed against the glass. I couldn't see his face, but he was in all black, and he had black gloves on. I was standing to the side out of view. He looked around for a minute or two until he ran around the house again. I quietly ran back into the hallway and shoved my nephews into the bathroom and whispered, Lock the door behind you. They were panicked and confused, but I didn't have a phone with me, so I had to go back to the kitchen and get it. The boys closed and locked the door and I ran back out to grab my mum's phone. I could hear glass cracking again, and at this point I started to lose my mind. I began crying and shaking, and I called my sister. I don't really know why I called her instead of the police, but I did, and I told her that someone was trying to break into the house. She freaked out and told me I needed to call the cops. I was terrified and didn't want to hang up, but I did eventually and dialed 911. I was still in the kitchen when I saw another man run across the backyard. I was sobbing and shaking, and the police weren't being quick enough. After asking for my address and getting the necessary information from me, they told me to stay on the line and they were sending someone out. It felt like it took forever, but finally a cop car drove around the neighbourhood and said we were fine. I told him that there were two men outside trying to get in, so they got out of their cars and looked around the house. They went to the side where I heard the giant crack and they saw that one of the windows was shattered and another was cracked. They were definitely trying to get in, but I don't know what they were planning on doing. There was a giant bed frame in front of the two broken windows, and I think if it hadn't have been there, I would probably not be telling this story. They never caught the men that were trying to get in, but I hope I'm never in a situation like that again. This only just happened to me. It was roughly 9.30pm on a Tuesday night. Nothing ever happens on Tuesdays. I went downstairs to get my dog so that she could sleep in my bed with me. I said goodnight to my parents, got my meds and fetched a glass of water. I set the cup down and turned the lights off, totally forgetting about the glass of water. I placed my dog on my bed, turned on my laptop and I realised I left my water downstairs. I went back down to get it and saw a car pull up through my kitchen window. I thought it was my older sister, but she was staying at a friend's house. I looked out, and it was a small compact car, and from what I could see, two men were inside. I had no clue who they were, so I began stressing out. I tried to get a closer look, making sure I couldn't be spotted. I am a small guy, standing at about 5 foot 5 and weak as hell. A 14 year old kid can't take on two tall buff looking men. I saw something in the back of the car, but couldn't quite make out what it was. I snapped myself out of it, grabbed my water, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw one of them getting out and walking towards my house. I lost it at that point, went to my parents room and asked, who's outside? My dad was confused and said, is it your sister? I shook my head and told him that we didn't know them. They weren't our neighbours, plus their house is a walking distance. There's no reason they'd need a car. He got up and my mum followed. They looked out to the front door and saw a tall man in a grey Under Armour hoodie walking up carrying something. 
my dad instantly went out there and freaked out at the guy. My mum rushed me upstairs and had her phone at the ready. I went to my room still holding my water. I have no clue what happened. To those two guys who creepily drove up to my house when it was pitch dark outside. I hope I don't see you again. So a little backstory. My grandma, quite frankly, is a little crazy. Nothing is actually mentally wrong with her, as in she has no medical conditions that aren't physical. She's just really extra, shall we say, and incredibly fun in small doses. Because of this, when she moved, she wanted to move to a place where no matter what she did to decorate her house, she wouldn't be judged for it. She also wanted a place that would allow her to make these changes, a non-deed restricted community, and she found exactly that in a place called Moon Lake. This place was exactly what she wanted, but there was one catch, crime. She knew this and made sure to move to a place in Moon Lake with a lower crime rate than any other, but it was still pretty high. Now a little bit about the layout of the house, in order for you to understand the story a bit more. Entering the house, you come to a small room, a mud room of sorts. Turning to your left, there is another door that leads into the main part of the house, the kitchen to be exact. When you walk through the door and immediately look to your right, the dining room table is there, and if you keep walking forward to the end of the kitchen and turn right, there is a large opening that leads to the living room. Once you go into the living room, on your left is a hallway that has only one door at the end that leads to the master bedroom. If you turn to the left right before entering the hallway, you will see a door that leads to the backyard, and the wall of the living room that is facing the backyard is basically just one large window. Now the story. So when this happened, I was about eight or nine years old. I used to think sleeping over at my grandma's house was so cool. After all, why wouldn't it be to an eight-year-old me? I got to do, for the most part, anything I wanted. It even got to a point where my family came up with a saying that was, what happens at grandma's stays at grandma's. This was because my parents didn't even want to deal with knowing what we were doing over at her house. This made it so that I slept over there almost every single weekend, and me and my sisters would take turns at her house. But this day in particular, it was my turn to sleep over. The day was fine, normal, and at the time I didn't have a phone of my own, so I spent pretty much the whole day watching YouTube and drinking soda. It was great. Eventually my grandma went to sleep on her bed, and she let me stay up as late as I wanted. I slept on the couch, and for most of the night I watched a YouTuber by the name of Mr. Nightmare. It kind of set me off for a little bit, and I was paranoid, but I eventually shook it off after watching something else. At one point, though, I was searching for a new video, when I suddenly heard something outside. This was pretty normal, but I still turned the outside light on from where I was sitting and surveyed my grandma's fenced-in backyard. As usual, there was nothing there, so I turned the light off and kept searching for a new video. I heard footsteps again. Not super close, but close enough for me to want to look outside again, and I didn't even bother turning the light on this time, because I figured it was just another animal. When I looked, though, I saw something. I saw something walking outside the fenced area. I assumed it was just an animal, and really just used that as an excuse to not look outside again, when I heard more footsteps. The reason I just assumed that it was an animal was because the house was surrounded by forest on every side, other than the front where the road was. I continued to ignore the footsteps until I realised something. The thing I saw outside the fence wasn't walking on all fours. It was walking on two. This of course freaked me out as I realised that the thing walking around the fenced area that night wasn't a thing. It was a person. This meant that the next time I heard footsteps, I definitely checked. And while doing so, rather stupidly, I turned on the outside light again. This made whoever it was walking around outside stop dead in his tracks and look at the window. 
and whilst doing so, showing something on his hip that was originally covered. The thing that I saw glimmered silver, and to this day I still don't know if it was a knife or a gun, or honestly if it was even a weapon at all. I just knew at the time that this man saw me and that I needed to turn off the light. So I immediately turned it off and huddled down, not making a sound, not watching my videos, and nothing that would indicate I was still there. I just sat there, waiting for what seemed to be the longest couple of minutes in my life. I finally heard what seemed to be footsteps growing distant, until I couldn't hear them at all, and I amazingly managed to go to sleep after all of that. To this day I haven't told my family what happened that night. Back then I just wanted so badly to assume it was just me being paranoid over the scary stories I was listening to at 1am, and now I figure what's the point anyway. It's been four to five years since it happened. Best case scenario is that my grandma actually cares enough to take more precautions around the house, but she would end up taking it too far at some point, and it would be a bad thing for her in the end, as she would overreact. Not only that, but I would be in trouble for having kept this from everyone all this time. So honestly, I'm just keeping this a secret, and I know that it probably was just me being paranoid, but whether or not it was paranoia, or a real event, it still scared the hell out of me. First off, I would like to set the scene. This happened in May of 2000. I live in a very rural area of Alabama. My mum was with her friends at a party, and my dad was invited to hang out with his boss. So that meant I got to spend the night in by myself. I used to enjoy being home alone, as I had more time to myself. I decided to pass the time by watching scary movies, as I had rented some on VHS the previous day. I remember that while I was watching the original Halloween, I looked out of the living room window and saw a man dressed in all black, watching me. I couldn't see what he looked like, as if he were wearing a disturbing looking mask. He stared for about a minute, before walking out of sight. About half an hour later, three sudden and loud bangs on the front door caused me to jump up in fear. I cautiously got up and looked through the peephole, and I thought I was going to throw up. The same man from earlier was at my front door, only this time, he was holding a very large knife in his hands. Upon getting a closer look, this man looked to be about six foot four and was very well built. He stood there for about 15 seconds before he started pounding on the front door, trying to get in. I ran around the house, locking every door and window. I got on the phone with the police, grabbed the machete that I kept in our garage, and told the man to go away and that the police were on their way. But this didn't faze the man at all. Instead, he ran to the backyard, climbed over our seven foot tall fence and sprinted to the back door. I then ran upstairs to my bedroom and hid in the closet. The most sickening part happened when the whole house went dark, and I heard the back door get broken down. He had cut the power and broken into the house. I was more terrified than I had ever been. I then heard heavy footsteps throughout the house. He was searching for me. I heard him opening every door downstairs, and after ten minutes of hiding, I heard him coming up the stairs. I was sweating all over, wondering when the cops would arrive, and after five minutes of footsteps, he opened my bedroom door. At this point, my whole life was flashing before my eyes. I was so sure I was going to die. Footsteps came to the closet. Suddenly, a wave of what I can only describe as a miracle rushed over me. The cops showed up right at the very moment and arrested the man as he tried to escape. I ended talking to the cops and they left after taking my statement. My parents showed up later that night and hugged me tightly, happy that I was okay and alive. I later learned that another family living two blocks down from me had had their lives ended. They were tied up with a rope and duct tape and were savagely attacked by his aforementioned weapon of choice. The young son had gotten the worst of it. He was found propped up against the living room couch, his head missing. To this day, 
I thank my lucky stars I wasn't another victim of that man. This is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me, and what makes it worse is that if things had gone down differently, I might not have been here to tell the story. I am a 5'7 girl and around 130 pounds. This happened to me about three years ago when I was in my early 20s and still a student and was living in a very safe area. Growing up, I had loved martial arts and having grown up in a small rural town, I'd take what I could get. Karate? Fine. Judo? Sure. Kung Fu? Why not? Taekwondo? Sign me up. I loved it all, and I still do, as it helped me discipline my body and mind and grow my confidence. It had been a few years since I'd moved out to my country's capital to study, and I had kind of fallen off the martial arts wagon at that point, as college was taking up most of my time. I should also mention that at the time, I lived with my younger brother and our cat. We lived on the first floor right next to a military camp and a patch of forest which leads to a creek. On our back balcony there was a circular metal ladder that would lead up to it, ultimately leading to the kitchen door, which, of course, was always kept under lock and key, except for when the cat wanted to go out. Then we'd unlock the door and he would go down the outdoor metal stairs to find his cat friends and play. I commuted to my college every day by walking 30 minutes to a bus stop, then riding the bus for an hour, and then walking another 10 minutes until I made it to campus. When it was time to go home, I'd have to do the same thing all over again. So as you can imagine, it was very tiring. I would be out of the house every day from 10 in the morning until almost 10 at night, so when I'd come home, I'd be knackered. Now, I don't believe in premonitions much, but I do believe in instinct, and for quite a while I felt like something was up with that patch of forest behind our apartment. I felt like I was being watched. Maybe it was the blackness of that patch of forest that made me feel uneasy, as there wasn't a single light there, and the outdoor ladder looked like it descended into an abyss. You could take three steps into that patch of forest, and you'd be under complete cover of darkness. It made me feel weird, because even though I couldn't see anything, I knew that something was up. I had no proof, I just felt it. I was in class one Wednesday afternoon with my best friend at the time, and a professor came in to pitch an internship to us. Internships aren't very well known in my country, so professors actually have to argue their case about why, as students, we could benefit from this. My best friend, I'll call her Kay, was very interested, but when the professor listed off the requirements, she realised she couldn't apply, as her GPA wasn't high enough. This led to Kay having a crying fit after the class was over, which led to a panic attack, and it got so bad that she called her boyfriend to come pick her up from campus. And since I didn't want to leave her alone, I stayed with her until her boyfriend showed up and got in his car with her. The conversation in the car was basically me and her boyfriend trying to console her and help her cheer up. I asked her if she'd like me to go over to her place so we could all hang, but she said she was okay and didn't want to put me through the hassle of commuting home the next day as she lives a full hour away by car, so two hours away by public transport. It was decided that they would drop me off at my house and they'd go to theirs. We arrived at my house around 7pm, a full three hours before I normally come home. I hugged her, tell her to text me if she needs anything, I thank her boyfriend and get out of the car, glad that I'll be home early for a change. I went in through the main entrance, climbed up the stairs to the first floor, and put my key in the lock. I opened the door and called out my brother's name like I always did, and got no response. The house was dark except for one light in the room by the front door. It was eerily quiet, and I felt my stomach tie into a knot, because even if I couldn't hear anything, I could feel that someone was there, and when my instinct talks, I listen. I turned right into the hallway that leads into our rooms, and I saw my brother's door slam shut hard as soon as I got into the hallway. My brother's room is on the end of the hallway, to the left, facing my room, and my first thought 
was that my brother had taken a shower and forgotten to get a towel, so he made a run for it from the bathroom, which is next to my room, in embarrassment. But then I heard muffled whispers coming from his room, and it sounded hushed and pressing. I still had no reason to be afraid, but I was on high alert, because I thought my brother and his friends were planning on jumping out of his room and scaring me, and I wasn't about to let them get the satisfaction. I inched down the short hallway through the darkness, and before I knocked on my brother's door, I took a look into my room. It was a mess. My mattress was off my bed, my clothes and my books were all over the floor, my jewellery box was empty and thrown on my bed, and all in all it looked like a tornado had gone through it. Now the hushed whispers in the next room sounded extremely pressing and anxious, now that I was close, because though I had tried to tiptoe as silently as possible, my steps had been audible. I realised quickly what was happening, and I went ballistic. At that moment I just lost it. My fight-or-flight instinct kicked in, and it kicked fight into maximum overdrive. The words danger, thieves, fight hit me like a truck, and I threw my whole weight onto my brother's door, bursting it down so furiously you'd think it owed me money. I saw no one in there, but it had been turned upside down also, and I knew what I had heard. So I ran to the balcony door, ripped the curtain out of my way, and went through the open door just in time to catch one of the thieves right after he'd jumped off the balcony ledge. Looking back on it, he looked like a normal guy. Black hair, normal height, athletic build, big earring on his left ear. But in that moment, he looked like a monster to me. A vile, putrid, home-invading monster. I started screaming unintelligible things as I saw him stumble around, obviously having hurt his legs before he got back on his feet and ran away. They were gone. I was safe. But then it hit me. Where was my laptop? I ran into my room and tore the place apart, looking for it, but it was gone. I started screaming and crying. The unfairness, audacity, and the cowardice hit me like a steel toe to the stomach. I screamed and cried like I was in a Grecian tragedy. I am not rich by any means, and neither is my family. I had an old laptop which was probably worth pennies second hand, but I needed that laptop for my schoolwork, and without it, I couldn't finish my semester. Not to mention that I don't have any real-life friends, as the majority of them at the time were online, so if I lost that laptop, I lost them too. My laptop was lost, and so was I. I felt violated, dirty, and less than. I was afraid I'd throw up or pass out, or both. I was taking such rapid and deep panicked breaths that my vision became blurred. In the most panicked and grief-stricken state I'd ever been in in my life, tears streaming down my face, I called my mother to tell her what had happened, and she told me to call the police. It took me almost a full minute on the phone with the operator, telling her again and again where I lived, who I was, and what had happened before she understood me and she said she'd send someone over. A few days later I was talking with my mother about the incident, and she told me something that hit me hard. I come from a pretty much trilingual household, and she told me that when I called her that night, she couldn't make out what language I was speaking, because I had been so panicked. Makes sense why I had to repeat myself over and over to the operator. I started running around the house like a lunatic, checking every door and every lock in a frenzy until I got to the kitchen and saw that the window had been broken. Without thinking, I slammed it shut. Stupid, I know, but I was beside myself and wasn't thinking straight. My brother came home a few minutes later, and when he came in, he saw me panicked, crying my eyes out, and speaking almost unintelligibly. He came to the bedrooms, and he saw the damage, and told me to go sit in the living room to calm down. I did as he said and tried to calm down. But I jumped at every sound and started crying more, telling him I was sorry that I got home too late and that our laptops were gone. The house seemed so big to me at those moments, so dark and so hostile, and I felt so small and helpless. 
My brother called me over to my room and showed me a pillowcase full of something. And when we looked inside, we found both laptops, all my jewellery, which was fake anyway, my old phone and some other stuff. They had been right in front of me the whole time. But I was so messed up that they didn't even register. The police eventually came about an hour later and did absolutely nothing. So my brother and I took it to the police station and filed a report of the incident. And since I had seen half of one of the culprit's faces, they asked me to come in for an identification. They even sent over someone to dust for prints. But nothing ever came of it. The police said that since they didn't even have a backpack to put the loot in and resorted to using one of our pillowcases, they were almost 100% junkies. We had the outdoor metallic ladder ripped off our kitchen balcony, much to my cat's displeasure, since that's how they got in. We also installed several motion-detecting lights, and for the next few months I was constantly on edge, and every time I passed near some suspicious characters who hung around near my usual bus stop, I felt a violent rage boil in me. I caught myself looking for the man I had seen, ready to beat him within an inch of his life. But I never did, nor heard his creepy whispered partner again. And my brother and I moved away from that apartment a few months later, because I had never felt comfortable there again. I picked up kickboxing, and because it has made me stronger, it has helped me feel safer, and I also always carry a knife with me now. I still think back to that encounter, and realise how stupid I had been. What creeps me out the most is knowing that that night there had been nothing but a thin plywood door separating me from potentially two dangerous men. Even if I know that me busting into my brother's room like a lunatic is what scared them off because of how stupidly fearless I was, I also realise how bad it could have gone. They could have had guns. They could have had knives. They could have had pepper spray or a chain or whatever and there were two of them and only one of me. And if they'd ganged up on me, even with the adrenaline having turned me into Doom Guy, I don't know how much of a chance I realistically stood against two men, high on whatever they were on, and desperate enough to break into an apartment and stuff loot into a pillowcase. Had they been willing to put up a fight, this would have ended very, very bad for me. What I do know is that I probably still would have bust in there like Doom Guy. So, to the creepy cowardly monsters who dared break into my apartment and tried to rob me and my brother and ended up traumatising me so badly I had to move, I hope for your sake we never meet again, because I've been kicking that sandbag for two years now and picturing your face every single time. For about a year I lived in a house with four flatmates. We had a pretty big backyard with a garage and a tool shed that we never used. We also had a motion detector light. Two of my housemates were very superstitious and believed in ghosts and spirits and such, and they also liked to get high on different substances. The lights in our backyard would go off randomly. I assumed they were animals, and my housemates were sure it were ghosts. One of them told us she'd seen a man ghost walking through our window when she was high on shrooms, they thought it was scary. And I thought nothing of it because, well, they're, they're high. A few nights later, drunk me thought I saw a man through the mesh door to our backyard. I just thought my mind was playing tricks on me because my housemate kept telling me about the ghost. Eventually, I moved back to my home country. And six months after that, I FaceTimed with one of the housemates. Turns out it hadn't been a ghost. A homeless man had been living in our tool shed for God knows how long. That gave me the creeps for sure. I've always been good friends with one of my cousins, Cole, who was the same age as I am. The two of us were not quite inseparable, but we always did get along very well together and were often found together, both in school, as we'd always wound up in the same class throughout elementary school and outside of it. When we were 12 and in the 6th grade, I was hanging out with Cole on a Friday afternoon around the later part of May, and we were psyched at the start of the weekend. We'd wound up at his house, since he didn't live too far from me, 
and at one point my mum called to say that our grandpa was in hospital. While the issue with our grandpa wasn't expected to be life-threatening, he was being kept at the hospital overnight for observation, and both my parents and Coles were planning on staying with him and grandma at the hospital, since my mum and her sister were the two of their siblings who lived close by. I was told that I was given the okay to stay at Cole's house for the night, with Cole's 15-year-old brother Hunter being in charge while our parents were out. This was fine by us. We got along well enough with Hunter, and he was never the bossy older brother cousin that some of my other friends said they had to put up with. We ordered out for pizza and enjoyed goofing off as boys that age tend to do. At around nine or so, there was a knock at the front door, and Cole went to answer it. I was a bit curious as to who it could be at that time of night, and so I watched from a ways back. At the door were two older guys. They said that they were with the city, and that they were investigating reports about the water pressure supposedly being bad in the neighbourhood. They asked Cole if his parents were home, and when Cole said that they were unavailable at the moment, which we were told to say to strangers if our parents went home. The guys started asking a bunch of questions about how the water pressure was in the house, and if they could come inside to check. Hunter came over at that point and politely told the guys that the water pressure was fine, and perhaps they should move on to check on other homes in the neighbourhood. The guys seemed reluctant to leave, but turned and walked away after Hunter started closing the door. After the door was shut, we looked at each other and shrugged, but didn't think too much of it after that, and went back to goofing off. Eventually we decided to go to bed. Cole and Hunter shared a bedroom, and we all agreed that I'd sleep in there with them, rather than me hitting the sack on the couch or something like that, so that we could talk a while while we fell asleep. Hunter grabbed a sleeping bag out of their camping supplies for me, and when we got into their bedroom, they stripped down to their briefs, and I remember Cole had mentioned to me once, a while back, that they had started sleeping in just their underwear. Since I hadn't originally planned on staying the night, I hadn't brought anything with me from home as far as overnight stuff, but since I wasn't in the mood to sleep in my clothes, I stripped down to my briefs as well, though I felt a bit embarrassed, even though we were all guys there, and I knew they wouldn't say anything or be judgmental. They climbed into their beds and I quickly crawled into the sleeping bag, and after talking for a while about random stuff, we eventually fell asleep. Early the next morning I got up because I had to pee, and so I quietly got out of the sleeping bag and went and did my business in the bathroom. On the way back to the bedroom I heard something in the family room, which was on the opposite end of the house from the bedrooms, and in particular the bathroom I was using. I didn't pay too much attention to it at the time, thinking it must be either Cole or Hunter, until I got back into the bedroom and realised that both of them were still in there. Trying not to panic, I woke them and told them that I thought someone was in the house. They quietly followed me, and the moment we walked into the family room, we saw the two guys from the night before in there, and it was rather clear that they were robbing the place. One of them started moving towards us as he pulled out a wicked-looking knife. The three of us promptly raced to the front door, somehow managed to get it unlocked and open and we fled outside. As luck would have it, a cop was driving by at that particular moment, so we quickly flagged him down and told him about the guys in the house. The cops called for backup, and within a couple of minutes several other cops were there, and they proceeded to enter the house, and after some searching they caught the two guys. The cops figured out that the two guys must have entered from a window in the laundry room that had a broken latch, and had probably targeted that house because while it wasn't empty, they'd probably realised that there were no adults there, and figured that if we'd discovered them, we could be more easily dealt with than adults. To add insult to injury, while we were waiting outside while the cops searched the house, both to get the two guys and make sure that there was no one else with them, some of the neighbours came out to see what the commotion was, and this included some kids who went to the same school as Cole and me, including a few who were in our sixth grade class with us. It was during that time that the three of us realised that we'd never had the chance to get dressed. So just like in the stereotypical nightmare, we had to stand outside in full view of everyone in just our briefs for what seemed like forever before being allowed back inside. When we went back to school on Monday, 
Cole and I had to put up with more than a bit of snickering, stares, and ribbing for the next few weeks, until school ended for the summer. I vaguely remember an incident that happened at the house we lived in before we lived in this one. My dad was looking after us while my mum went to a concert. I woke up in the middle of the night to people talking loudly. There was a stranger on our couch, and my family were talking to him. I remember he had blood on his face and I thought the whole thing was a bad dream. When I got into my teens, I mentioned it to my mum, and she told me my dad forgot to lock the back door and some drunk guy got out of a taxi and came into our house and just sat in the lounge. He'd been in a bad fight and had blood all over him. He left peacefully and was 100% convinced he was at his girlfriend's house in some other suburb to what we lived. It freaked me out when I heard that. About 13 years ago, my parents went out on a date and left my two brothers and me alone. I remember we were sitting watching The Matrix. My two brothers were sitting on the couch far away from the TV while I was sitting on the cushioned chair nearer to it and the front door of the house. During the movie, I suddenly noticed the doorknob wiggling as if someone was trying to get inside. Slowly I moved towards the door and checked the spy hole, but there was no one there. I figured at this point that the movie was just so loud that I didn't hear a knock and that one of my friends had come over and was trying to get in. I ended up opening the door and checking outside, but strangely enough there was no one there. I figured it was nothing and sat back down. About a minute later though it happened again. This time I asked my brothers if they'd seen what I'd seen and they said that they had. I once again checked the spy hole in the front door, and like before there was no one there. At this point I freaked out a bit and called my next door neighbour, hoping that it was just them playing a prank on us. He answered and I had him look out of his window at our door, but he saw nothing. After that he had his nephew John come over and hang out with us, since he thought I was a bit freaked out. Soon after he came over, it started raining and thundering. Now I was sitting with my brothers in the back of the room, while John was sitting on the cushioned chair. This time John heard the doorknob wiggling. We all panicked as we looked out of the windows and the spy hole and saw that no one was there, yet the doorknob continued to move. Around this time we ran to the kitchen and each of us grabbed knives. We then ran upstairs to the computer room and turned the lights off. While we were standing there, we checked outside the window towards the backyard and we saw two completely black figures moving around and hiding behind the trees and bushes. When the lightning flashed, we could see them holding something in their hands that shined brightly. I called several of my friends afterwards and checked to see if they were screwing around with us, but none of them admitted to it. I still wonder if it was perhaps my imagination or if there really were two people that were going to kill us that night. Hello, 73 percenters, and the rest of you guys. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's only polite. <laughs> uh, no, but really, why, why aren't you subscribed if you listen all the time? Like, legit, it's a legit question. I honestly don't know. It's weird. Whenever I like a channel, I just subscribe to them. Maybe I've just got weird viewer habits. But I, I would appreciate honest responses, honestly, if you would be so inclined to take the time to do so. Remember, there are plenty of other videos to binge on, if you do fancy. Um, but for now, I would like to give a huge thanks to Miss Fearsome for collaborating with me today. As you've heard, she is a really good narrator. And if you'd love to show her some love, then go ahead and check out her channel, which is in the description and on screen now. So I'm going to leave that with you. Stay awesome. Link right here. And I'll see you in the next one.